Yo guys, what's going on? It's your boy Soren here today. Finals are finally done and we can get right back into making some tutorials. So today I want to go over some of the best number one tips that uh that really helped me out a lot when I was starting up editing and that I think will help out a lot of beginners. Uh, they're the things just to make the editing process faster and uh, you know maybe some things you haven't known, especially doing like shortcuts and things like that. So just to jump right into it, the first thing we're going to be going over is uh, keyboard shortcuts. So this is going to be for keyframes and then it's generally moving around the interface for After Effects. So the first one I have is for different parts of your layer. So this is for the transform settings uh, and getting to those keyframes really quick. So that way you don't have to go through all, all these drop down menus to get to these uh, these five right here and a couple others. So uh, just intuitively S would be for your scale, A for your anchor point, R for rotation, uh, P for position, and then um, for your opacity, it's going to be T because it thinks of like transparency and things like that. And O is uh, used for something else. And if at any time you want to bring down multiple, so say I've scaled down and then I want to bring out my rotation, you're going to hold down shift and then hit R and it'll bring out your rotation. And if you want to put it away, hold shift again and hit R and that'll put it away. Uh, now say you have uh, some, some keyframes going on in multiple places. You got a rotation here, something like that. And then uh, you want to bring... And you want to bring out every aspect that has some sort of keyframe. So this will go with any effect you put on as well. If you hit U on your keyboard, this will bring down uh, any active aspects that have a keyframe on it. So I hit U and it brought down my scale and rotation because I put a keyframe on both of those. Uh, the other one that I didn't tell you about is if you hit L, that will bring down your audio levels. So that's just um, how many decibels your audio is. If you need to fade stuff in and out. All right. So the next uh, important shortcuts you need to know are your, I guess these are more miscellaneous, but they help you move around the layers without having to always click and drag the, uh, the timeline slider all over the place. So if you hit J on your keyboard, it'll take you to the previous keyframe that's up. And then, um, and this goes for any layer that's visible on your, on your workspace down here. So if you hit J, that'll take you to the previous one. And then if you hit K, that will take you to the next one on the timeline. If you have, let's say you have another layer up here and you hit, let's see, let's just cut this down real quick. If you hit I, it will take you to the beginning of that layer. And if you hit O, it'll take you to the end. Uh, another big one that I use a lot is if you hold down Alt and hit bracket, That'll cut, if you hit the start bracket, it will cut the beginning of the clip where it is. So that's holding alt and bracket. And then conversely, if you hold alt and end bracket, it'll cut the end of it. Now these bracket keys will also bring the beginning or end of layer to wherever your time marker is. So let's say I wanted this clip right here to be where my red time marker is here. If I hit the start bracket, it, uh, start bracket without holding anything else, it'll bring the layer there. And if I hit the end bracket, it'll bring the end of the layer there. Also, one thing uh, for doing previews, <clears throat> if you have uh, one of the After Effects that has the RAM preview function and you want your workspace to be cut down to a clip or just to any spot, move your time marker to where you want the beginning is and hit B on your keyboard. And then if you go to the end of where you want your workspace to be and you hit N, it will bring your workspace down to that space, exactly. All right, and then if you want to split a layer, like I said, so you want to end a clip here, but you don't want to cut off the rest, what you got to do is hit Control, Shift, D, and it will split it in half. So this layer ends here, and then this layer ends here. And now they're two separate layers. And last but not least, if you want to duplicate a layer, so make two of these, you're just going to hit Control, D. And that's uh, very similar to, to many programs. All right, so the next tip we got going on here is make sure you use easy ease on your keyframes. This is something that a lot of people who are just new just start putting stuff down and they don't really think about is that if you easy ease the keyframes in, it adds a lot more impact to, the, to uh, whatever effect you're trying to do. And it also makes things look smooth out. That's why it's, you're easing things in. So after you got your keyframe set here, this is just the scale in, scale out. Uh, you can either uh, click and drag to highlight all of them. You can right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease, 
You can do the same thing by hitting F9 on your keyboard. Or you can go into the graph editor, which is denoted by this little thing that says graph editor right here next to the timeline. And then you can click and drag all of these and hit this button right down here that's third from the right. And that will easy ease them in as well. If you leave it how the default uh, graph looks, that's, uh, I mean, it's not too bad. It works. But uh, if you click on any keyframe, it'll bring up these handles and you can mess around with them. Make them a little bit, uh, you know, slow at the beginning, fast at the at the transition, and just just something you can play around with to make sure you get the effect that you want to see. All right, now we're looking at something called keyframe interpolation. This is After Effects' way of trying to guess how it wants uh, an object to move around or to you know scale, how to change its aspect in between keyframes. So as we can see here, I have a, this little white box, and it moves from one spot to the other, and it's moving in a straight line, exactly how you think it would. But now if I try to change its direction again, this line here, this little red line that After Effects creates that shows its movement will bend because it thinks it wants it, it, it thinks you want it to curve around. So instead of moving in two straight lines, it has this little curvy fashion. And uh, if you've ever worked with motion graphics before, this can end up being either a big help or a big pain. Because if you want something to be making really sharp cuts and right angles and things like that, this will mess with it. Uh, for a while, I didn't know how to fix this until... Um, I saw someone else had told me a tip about it, but one thing you can do to fix this is once you have your position keyframe set and you're looking at them down here at the bottom, you can highlight all of them for the layer by clicking and dragging, or you can just click this, uh, the word position, and it'll highlight all of them for the layer. You're going to right click, go down to keyframe interpolation, and you're going to change the spatial interpolation, so that's uh, the shape of the path, like it says, and you're going to change it to linear, we'll change it to straight lines, and then uh, continuous bezier and auto bezier is uh, what's making it curve, as well as normal bezier, I think. I'm not too sure about the differences between these three, but I know any bezier and linear is going to have a pretty significant difference. So if I change it to linear, watch the curves will straighten out. And now it's making a, a nice sharp angle. All right, so this is one I actually just learned about recently. If you watched my previous video, it's an ROTC video I made. Uh, all the parts that just had pictures in it were actually the same picture being played over and over again while I did the transition syncing. And then I went in and replaced all of the pictures with something else. Uh, so this can be done without you know having to copy over keyframes and resize, pic uh, resize layers and all that. So what you're going to do is make sure you have the layer in the timeline selected. So let's say I want this Rocket League clip to be replaced. And then you go over to the imported files over here on your left or wherever you have it, and click on what you want it to be replaced with. So I'm going to replace it with this picture of a dog. And what you're going to do is hold down Control, Alt, and forward slash. And that will replace the clip. And that will replace over any keyframes it has and any uh, resizing, rotation, things like that. That's uh, That was on the previous layer. So this way, if you want to do all your syncing first and then, and then go back and find your clips, uh, you can do that as well. Uh, also, if you look at... Uh, I can't remember the name of it right now, but one of my edits I made, I made two exact copies of the same edit, but just had different things with it. This is also what I did, and just went through and replaced the, the images. All right, so this next one is going to save you quite a bit of a headache. Uh, this is working with a 3D camera and how to get the movement of it to do what you want versus what the program wants to do. Because the, the way the, ki the keyframes work on a camera aren't as intuitive as you might think. So right now I have a little, uh, just a very simple scene set up here. It's just a white box in front of a red box. <clears throat> so what you would think would happen is if I move the x, uh, the x coordinate on this position, it would just move to the left and it would move to the right. But instead, it doesn't do that. As you can see, our white box here is changing a, uh, it's kind of changing its aspect, while the red box is moving all the way out to the side. So what it's doing, it's not moving linearly to its left and right it's actually moving in an orbit because one thing that a camera has that a normal layer won't is a point of interest so this is where it's looking at so if you imagine you were holding a camera in real life and say you're looking at a cup on the desk in front of you uh, and you wanted to move to the left or right you would keep the same distance from the cup but you would be orbiting around it as if you were moving in a circle so if you want to get around this very easily without having to keyframe position and point of interest at the same time what you can do is go up here to layer, new, and create a null object. With this null object, you're going to make it 3D because your camera is moving in uh, 3D coordinates. And you're going to parent the camera to the null object. So if you take the pick whip here, which is the little swirly thing, and click and drag it to the null, 
and you move the position on the null, you can now move to the left and right exactly how you think it would. And uh, you can also move up and down and uh, and all the other aspects. So, you know, rotating and stuff like that will all look, look normal as you think it would show up. This is really good if you use the null layer and the camera's point of interest and things like that in conjunction after you practice with it a little bit, you can get some really good camera angles that a lot of people use in motion graphics and, you know, making intros and things like that. All right, so if you've ever had the unfortunate opportunity to mask something out in a clip, you know it's a, quite the pain in the ass, and uh, it's not fun, but this is the easiest way I can think of doing it without using Roto Brush because sometimes Roto Brush won't always work for the situation you're in. Uh, but if you have the chance to use Roto Brush, use it instead because it's a lot quicker. But if you want something super accurate or Roto Brush isn't working for you, then uh, you can use this technique. And this is what I do to uh, make sure my masks are more accurate, and that way I'm not moving each individual point from frame to frame. So if we go to the start here, say I want to mask out this little this sign up here in the corner, you'll go to your masking tool, which is right here, the pen, and you're just gonna you know click around it, which we'll do a very crude job right now, and it'll mask it out. But when you move forward, it's gonna move, and then so you're gonna hit M. And I'll bring up your mass path. So we'll go back here to the beginning. Make sure it's keyframed. And then move it over here. And then you can just go to your move tool and like double click on it and move it around. But uh, it's not going to fit exactly because the angle changing and stuff like that. And then also you can move each individual point. But when you get to more detailed objects, that won't look as good. And the points won't move how you think they will. So one thing I do is I will duplicate the layer. Take all mass off of this layer and just re- uh, remask it out. So we'll go around again and just mask it out. We'll create a keyframe for that mask path. And then I'm going to copy and paste this keyframe on to the path of the original layer. And so now this keyframe will be resizing and the points will be moving exactly with it. Uh, I could do this frame by frame and it would be very accurate. But uh, I think you guys get the point. And then masking, and honestly, it's just taking a lot of time to, uh, to do this if you want to make it look good. There's no really quick things that I know of. And if there are quick things, please tell me because no one likes masking. <laughs> All right, so this next one is a really big trick, especially if you don't have a very powerful computer or if you have a more sketchy version of After Effects that's uh, a bit unstable. Uh, so this is called memory purging. And it, what it does is clears the, the preview cache or just any sort of, I guess, any cache that After Effects may have created on your computer that's taking up RAM. So for me, if I RAM preview something and I end up RAM previewing a lot of different uh, portions of edits on at the same time, it'll start taking up RAM. And once you get to the max of what After Effects has allocated and you try to do something else, it'll like overload that and it'll crash the program. And this is something I had to learn the hard way because I my program crashes a lot, like more, more than, <laughs> than I'd like to admit. So what you're going to do is, like you can see here, I got a whole bunch of green going on here in the preview. That means this has been RAM previewed. So if I click the RAM preview button again, it's going to play automatically without having to reload anything. But say I've been RAM previewing too many things. I'm going to go up here to edit, purge, and then all memory. And this will get rid of any RAM preview I've done, but it'll also clear out the memory. So maybe After Effects run a little bit faster, and that way you have a less chance of your program crashing on you. So this is something... Uh, Every time I save my my project file, I also clear out the memory and purge it. That way, there's less chance of it crashing, and uh, I won't have to you know stop my workflow. But this is something really useful that I also just found out recently, and it would have helped a lot, you know, so I could avoid crashing. All right, so the next tip we got going on is pre-composing and working with compositions. Uh, so obviously, as soon as you start working on something in After Effects, you're going to be in a composition. Uh, but what pre-composing is is if you have something in here, you can right-click on it, go to pre-compose, and it'll take this clip and put it into a separate composition. That way you can add different effects to it and then work on it in a different composition. And it will act as if it was just a normal layer without anything, uh, without any keyframes on it. So when you pre-compose something like I did, right click and hit pre-compose, you can either leave all attributes, which means uh, if you have added any keyframes to it or any effects, those effects will stay in uh, the current composition and not be moved. This is very useful when you need to fix something like I'm about to show you. Or, um, you know, if you just want to make a small change that without affecting any other keyframes. If you hit move all attributes, it will take the layer that's in the current composition and make it into just a baseline layer. 
while taking all the keyframes and effects and moving it into the pre-composition. So, or I'm going to hit cancel just so I can show you this really quick. But uh, one thing, uh, especially with Call of Duty clips, I know, but every now and then you'll see it with other things while you're editing, is that if you put a motion tile on and you zoom out anything less than uh, 100% so the edges are showing, it'll have these black bars at the top and bottom. So that comes from just the way it's recorded. Uh, and it's not really anything on your fault from importing the clip. But the easiest way to fix it, so as I if I have this here, and I right click and I pre-compose. So this means even if you're at the end of edit, the editing process, you already have all these effects added, you can make this change and this fix really easy because these black bars look really bad and they're really noticeable in your edits. So if you hit leave all attributes and tut, or in composition, I named my composition tut. So if you do leave all attributes and hit OK, this no longer has a uh, this no longer has a motion tile on it. And even here you can kind of see the black bars at this edges. You see this little this little gap. So all you would have to do with this is go to scale and scale it up by maybe 1%. And now you can no longer see the black bars on the side. And if we go back to our original composition, the black bars are no longer there because they're not showing up in the, the pre-composition that this one is. All right. And last but not least is make sure you find uh, some, you know, some of your favorite editors and you'll keep up with them. Make sure they're like they're the people that you use as inspiration. Right now, I have two of maybe the biggest, like the bigger influences from why I wanted to start editing up. Uh, there's a guy called Myth Doom. He goes by the name Doom. Uh, he's a Call of Duty editor that I've been watching for a while. I really love what he does. He's very creative, and uh, he always has you know some fresh stuff. And really, no one's able to copy him what he does because it's pretty high level and it's you know very specific to him like I don't have to see his name on the edit to know who to know that it's him editing and also on the right here is someone called the out uh, oh fuck uh, the alkalypse I guess the alcalypse I don't know how to pronounce his name but he's someone who he's pretty much the reason why I started doing anything that's dealing with motion graphics just because what I saw him doing I thought was really incredible and uh, he's also been a big influence on why I wanted to start learning motion graphics and how I edit the way I do today you know, on top of really big people, because I don't know if I'll ever be this good as either of these two or, if, I mean, at least no time soon. It's definitely going to take quite a bit of work because they've been doing this for quite a while. And then uh, also another thing to keep track of is I also post to Instagram and stuff like that. And so I always like to keep up with the people I know on Instagram, the people I follow. They're constantly editing. They're constantly getting better. If you want to get better at editing and if you're not doing something new every time you edit, then you're not going to get better. If you sit there just redoing the same thing that you've done all the time, you're going to sit here and be shit posting a whole bunch of edits that all look the same. But anyway, guys, I just want to thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you got something good out of this tutorial. Uh, hopefully you learned some things that will make editing a little bit easier, a little bit faster for you. That way you can uh, focus on bigger and better things. But anyway, I've been Soren, and I'm out. Thank you.